Hey guys, Ashrak here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're having a quick look at a showcase for the free Man of Hope action figure that I gave out during Christmas. As you already know, this figure is inspired by a certain DC character and to sculpt this figure, my primary inspiration was the Prime One statue of this character based on the Hush storyline. So I'll go into a little bit more detail on that later. This video is basically just going through putting the figure together. So for the print here, I use the new combination of resins. I'm experimenting with all of these different resins that I have again, and Resi One's been providing me with some more resins to play with. So for this particular action figure, I'm using the resin combination of the Resi One M58 and the Resi One Anti Impact. So the ratio that I mix it here is 60% of M58 and 40% Anti Impact. With both of these resins, they have some amazing properties that could translate really well into action figures. So that's why I mix these two resins. And I think that the results are overall good. Uh, but with the M58, it has some amazing properties where the parts do not grind and turn to dust. And it does have some ABS like properties as well. Uh, whereas the Anti Impact is more of a nylon like material so it's very durable very tough it just provides you that extra bit of uh, peace of mind when printing with the resin it's just more durable so with the m58 it's not as durable so adding the anti-impact into the m58 made sense to add that durability uh, to the figure so that's why I combined both of these resins um, the m58 however holds so much more details and the anti-impact is not as good uh, in holding details so I think it was just the best of both worlds and in this figure, you can see that the figure holds a lot of details and also maintains good bit of strength. So here, as always, I have all my parts assembled anatomically along with their respective joints. And I'm using a hairdryer, as you can see in the video now, uh, that I use to heat up the parts so that the assembly is a lot easier. So the first joint we're going to start with is the ankle joint. So the smallest joint is uh, basically what you want to align to the ankle joints. Uh, you can basically just uh, put it into the slot slightly uh, and see if it fits or not. And then that way you can determine which joint is for which body part. With this body part, all you do is heat up the boot and the peg uh, should slide into the system. Once you give the printer parts a little bit of heat, it gives it that little bit of softness and flexibility. So it's just easier to uh, force parts into the cavities. As always, once I put the figure together, you just need to push in the sides slightly so that the hole is a little bit better. And when it uh, cools down, it cools down in that more tighter position. So the figure has a little bit more friction. So once both the ankles are done, uh, it's the same process for the other ankle as well. We can now move on to the knee joints. Uh, the joints are exactly the same as the ankle joint system. So all we do is heat up the calves a little bit with our hairdryer. And once it's heated enough and has that slight flex to it, we can press the joint into the calves and they should fit in uh, pretty well. Uh, once the seam has been done for both sides, you can now move on to the elbows. So as you may have already noticed by now, the joint system that I'm using on this figure has uh, the same joints uh, across multiple parts of the figure. It just makes it easier for me to design the figures and also easier for me to articulate because it's a similar kind of joint uh, and also easier to put together for uh, people that are printing it as well. Uh, so that's why we're using the same kind of joint system. Similar to the ankle and the calf before it, uh, the elbow joint is also heated and connected, so that's no issue there. Uh, you should not have any issues with attaching the parts. The other elbow is the same process, and once both elbows are done, we can now move on to the shoulders. So the shoulder joints have a slight variation here. Uh, while the previous two hinge joints had a peg at the end which connects into the body, the shoulder uses a ball joint to connect to the body. So this is so that we can give uh, the shoulder a little bit more butterfly as well or basically a little bit movement in the socket because there's a little bit of area within uh, like the chest cavity so that you can move it around. Um, so once you heat up the shoulder part, uh, you basically plug uh, the joint into the shoulder part. So next up, we can move on to the neck joint. Uh, the neck joint is a double ball peg system. So the double ball peg allows for a wide range of motion. A lot of action figure companies use this. So you must have seen very good examples of this joint. All right, so now that we have all the individual joints put into their sockets, we can start attaching uh, the whole body together. So we start with attaching the knees to the thighs. So we heat up the thighs and pop the knees in. Uh, following the knees, uh, we do the same to our elbows. So it's basically just heating up the biceps and popping in the elbows. Make sure you heat it a little bit so that you don't damage the figure. If you do not heat it because the joints being so small, you might have a chance of breaking it. So I would always, uh, always just uh, advocate for heating it. 
uh, yeah so once you heat up all the joints and they're in place uh, leave the figure alone for a little bit so that it cools down and the material regains all of its strength if you do not let it cool down you might be flexing it too much and that might break the figure so just be a little bit careful um, because the ankles are the smallest piece here uh, caution is advised although I didn't have any problems collecting connecting these parts on my video it's just better to be safe than sorry Next up, we've got the shoulder joints. Uh, it's simply the same steps as before. We heat up the body uh, sockets so that it's hot and pliable enough. And we drive through the shoulder peg into the body and it should connect really well. You might not always hear a satisfying pop because it's resin and not plastic, but if the joints are correctly calibrated, they should sometimes have pops. So that might be like slightly fun. As you can see, this system allows for a lot of motion in the joints, so this should help us with all of our poses we want for the figure as well. Alright, so once the arms are fully in the body, all we need to do is get them out of the way so that there is easier access to the ball joints that lead into the hip. So uh, with this, we heat up the figure's inner thigh parts uh, that are connecting to this joint. Uh, we make sure that we heat it up enough so it's flexible and pliable again and then we should be able to peg it straight onto the body and uh, once you do both legs you're basically done and now for the crown the head is also a simple heat and pop we heat it enough and the dumbbell joint should glide straight in so here we have it, the figure is fully completed. In terms of articulation, here's a quick demo on the range of the head. The head should be able to do most things you want because it's the double peg system. The shoulders go about that high and it can come back down as well. It's a little bit tough, but it shouldn't be that difficult. Once you break it in, it should work fine. The arms can go all the way up. And if you look at the elbow joint, it can rotate as well, adding a little bit more to the uh, figure's posability. The elbows can crunch up about that much. With the hips, they can go that far forward and they can also go up right next to the side as well. So you can kick up about that much from the side and it has a little bit of articulation at the top of the thigh as well. Uh, the knees can crunch up that much and the foot also has some articulation so it can flex a little bit and crunch up a little bit. All right, so let's get into a quick height comparison. Here we have the figure with the 2023 DC Superpowers cape attached to the back. Uh, here we have the Exterminator figure. That was one of the first figures I made uh, in height comparison. It is a slight bit smaller, so it's outdated technology and one of the first figures I made in five inch scale. So it was trying to replicate the Superpowers line a little bit. I think I've evolved since then. So the new figure should be a lot better. Even the DC McFarlane Multiverse toys uh, that are Superpowers are slight bit shorter and also judging it by aesthetical and articulation properties they are quite different from the man of hope uh, he does however scale very well with the new 52 dark side action figure in terms of the references that I use for this figure, the figure was massively inspired by the Primon statue for the Hush version of Soups. As you can see, the influence is most effectively visible on the S symbol on the chest, the wrist cuffs, boot cuffs, and the stitch line going down his boot. All right, so there you have it, gang. The figure is all put together, and I think that with the new articulation scheme, it just adds a whole bunch of articulation to a five inch scale. For people wanting to upsize this figure, if this is what they want, they could definitely make it a six inch figure, or it, it can even scale a McFarlane size figure which is completely doable from the slicer software so feel free to explore your prints and I hope you have a great time printing this figure so if you want more action figures to print and add to your collection every month please subscribe to the Azra collections patreon channel if you want to see more action figure projects uh, please subscribe to my youtube channel I'll be doing videos every so often if you have any issues or questions please leave comments in the comment section below and make sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it also in the comment section below please let me know what other figures or projects you would like me to do next I'll be really interested in knowing what your ideas are and please be specific as to which character and which storyline as well if possible Possible. If your comment is chosen and a figure is made based on that comment, your comment will be showcased in one of my future videos. Thank you again to my Patreons Chris Sudak, Daniel Lopez, Jonathan Zaragoza, Ryan Davies, Vinny, Aden, and Joshua Ruol. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and for all the support over the past few months. Your support allows me to do what I love to do and what I enjoy doing so much and I enjoy absolutely every minute of it. 
I hope to be doing more action figures every month. So stay tuned and thank you again for all the support. Also, a big thank you to all the viewers and subscribers on my YouTube channel. Without you guys, there would be no audience. So there would be no me. Thank you so much for tuning in again. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video.